How are you guys doing? Today is Sunday, January 2nd, 2022. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to do an elite individual profile on Fernando Tatis Jr., the elite Dominican shortstop for the San Diego Padres, turns 23 today. And my intention with this episode is, of course, to point out on a micro level, like the, stat, the individual statistics that actually set him ahead of other players at his position, especially for what he's doing at this moment in his career. And of course, I'm going to step back and look at the macro and get a good under... And, and, and give a good sense of the accolades, the achievements, and the accomplishments that he's been able to pick up, especially when we're talking about a league where we're talking about the world's best baseball league here, and baseball is definitely a global sport, considering how many people combined are competing for those very limited uh, finite rise, roster spots in the MLB. The fact that Fernando Tatis would go on to lead the National League in home runs last year as a 22-year-old, I think should kind of speak wonders onto itself. And it's not just that he, and it wasn't just this last season where he's shown that he's great. This was just a continuation of what he's done before. So getting into the who Fernando Tatis is, uh, Fernando Tatis is a, like I said, he's the, he's the hard hitting shortstop for the San Diego Padres. And just to get into his background, he's originally from the Dominican Republic. He would eventually find himself getting signed as an international free agent by the Chicago White Sox. He would, however, get traded to the San Diego Padres as a prospect and as he would finally get called up and his first season would be his age 20 season in 2019. In his rookie season, he would only play 84 games in a season where the Padres would finish with a 70 and 92 record. They won five, they won four more games in the previous season, but they were still missing out. In those 84 games, he finished with 106 hits. That's 22 more hits than games played. He had 61 runs in those 84 games, which is an incredible pace. He had 13 doubles, six triples, 22 home runs, and 53 RBIs in what's essentially half of a baseball season. I guess if you double those, roughly. And I guess that, that that's still about 40 home runs and 100 RBIs pace for what he was doing as a rookie. He would finish with a 317 batting average, which to date is the highest batting average you would ever finish a season with. Same with his on-base percentage would be 379. He'd finish with a 590 slugging percentage. He would finish with a 969 OPS on the season and a 154 OPS plus. OPS plus meaning 154 OPS plus meaning that he hit 54% better than the mean or the average hitter when it comes to to OPS. And at the conclusion of the year, he will go on to finish third in rookie of the year voting. And in this year, the rookie of the year ended up going to Pete Alonzo. And he also finished behind Mike Soroka from the Atlanta Braves as well. Um, so that is how his 2019 fared as San Diego didn't make the playoffs. This was transitioned into his second season, which was his age 21 season in 2020. 2020 was the season where COVID would delay the beginning of the season and shorten the season from 162 games to 60. However, they would expand the playoffs to allow double the amount of teams, eight teams from the American League and the National League. The Padres are actually one of those teams that got in. But in Fernando's second season with the Padres, in those 59 games he played, he finished with 50 runs and he had 62 hits. Yeah, that's three more hits than games played, continuing his streak. Uh, he would finish with 11 doubles, two triples, 17 home runs, and 45 RBIs. Um, as in 2020, he would go on to finish with a 277 batting average. That is the lowest batting average he's put together in a season. He would finish with a 366 on base percentage and he had a 571 slugging percentage he would end the year with the with a 937 ops which to this date is the lowest ops he's had considering that's the lowest slugging percentage he's had he would finish with a 156 ops meaning he was hitting 56 points better than the mean uh he would go on to be named the silver he would be named a silver slugger at the position as he finished fourth in mvp voting not to mention that he would also be named to the all mlb first team in 2020 um and this was of course his age uh, this was his age uh, 21 season. So being named a first team all MLB player at 21 is no small feat. And he will go on to finish fourth in MVP voting as Freddie Freeman would be named the regular season MVP in 2020. When the San Diego Padres made the playoffs, this will be the only time that he's made the playoffs in his career with the Padres, by the way, they would end up beating the Cardinals two to one in the wild card series before and eventually sweeping the Dodgers in the National League division series. Um, so that is exactly how those uh, eh, that's kind of how it went for him as in the St. Louis series, he had five RBIs alongside two home runs and he was only able he wasn't even able to bring a run home against the sand or against the uh, L.A. Dodgers that year.
that you would eventually end up with the Dodgers taking home the World Series as the Dodgers ended up beating the Tampa Bay Rays. That would be the first time the Dodgers won in, since the 80s, and that was like his rival. But the Padres would um, put up quite the fight that year, and they would prove that they were at least like a formidable opponent for the future, especially considering that that was the first year where they had Manny Machado. Transitioning into Fernando Tatis's third season, his most recent season that he's played, his age 22 season with the San Diego Padres in 2021. He would go on to play 130 games in a season where the Padres finished with a 79 and 83 record after holding the wild card spot for a grand majority of the season, but then they would eventually hit a bad losing streak and let the St. Louis Cardinals pass them by a good amount. However, in the and a big part of the reason why they kind of fell off towards the end is that Fernando Tatis was injured for a good amount of this season. He would deal with a shoulder injury, and I believe he was on the COVID list for a bit. Um, but in those 130 games he played, he would go on to finish with 135 hits, make, continuing his three-year streak of having more hits than games played. He would finish with 99 runs on the season. He would also top the 30 doubles mark for the first time as he had 31. He would tie Bryce Harper for the National League lead in home runs as he finished with 42 of them. That's the only time in his career that he's actually led the National League in any statistic. And for it to be home runs is actually quite a feat. He would finish with 97 RBIs as well, as he also had 25 stolen bases. He would finish with a 282 batting average, a 364 on base percentage, which is the lowest he's put up in his career. He would also finish with a 611 slugging percentage, which is the highest of his career. His combined on base plus slugging percentage, his OPS would be 975, which is the highest he's ever put up in his career. And his OPS plus compared to the average um, batter it would be at 166 that's the highest he's ever been and his 292 total bases are by far the most bases he's had in a season considering this is the first time he's even played this many games in the first place at the conclusion that or within the season he would be named an all-star for the very first time in his MLB career of course they would they didn't name all-stars in 2020 when he was named to the all MLB first team and given his, sil his silver slugger award um, but at the same time winning his very first all by the by the fact the fact that he was and by the time he won his first all-star he was a first team player and a silver slugger award winner really said something but even at the conclusion of 2021 this most recent season he was named to the all MLB first team at the shortstop position and he was also given the silver slugger award as well despite missing about a month of the season and of course the Padres are going to miss the playoffs and this leads to where we are now as he turns 23 we are starting to, we are seeing a player that very well could age in, into being one of the greatest players in MLB history he is on pace to possibly end up as a hall of famer and the fact that he's done so much in such little time of course should be the hint that he's only going to get better I believe even if even if he just levels off here and plays like this for about 10 years. You still go down as one of the best baseball players to ever play the game. So I really can't wait to see what Fernando Tatis does, especially while he's this hot at this moment of the season. His bat will, his, like his bat will, at this moment, I wouldn't be surprised if he hit 50 home runs this upcoming season because his momentum has been kind of nuts. But with that said, I want to thank the Pro Baseball Reference websites as well as the MLB websites for giving me all the facts and figures that I need. I want to thank everyone for listening to all eight, nine minutes of this piece. Um, and I want once all of today's exhibitions and matchups are done, I'm going to come back tomorrow on, mon on Monday, January 3rd for another episode. So until then, thanks for listening. I hope all is well and I'll catch you with more tomorrow. Peace out.